Here's the text of the ratio test, and let's look through it piece by piece. The first thing I want to point out is that I didn't specify the bounds, I just said that this was an infinite series. That means the top bound is infinity, but the bottom bound isn't specified. And the reason is that it actually doesn't really matter. If I think about these two series, the only difference is a sub 1. And a sub 1 is going to be some finite number as long as it's defined there. So if this infinite bit converges, it goes to some finite number, then this goes to some finite number as well. If this infinite bit diverges, then it doesn't matter that I'm adding some finite number to it, this diverges as well. So whether an infinite series is converging and diverging, it does not depend on where my indices start. That's why we are not too concerned about specifying indices from here. We only need to specify that it's infinite because if it's finite, it definitely converges. The next thing I want to point out is what exactly this ratio is that we're taking the limit of. Those subscripts are indices, and they tell us where this term is in my sequence. And k plus 1 over k means we're taking the ratio of two consecutive terms. So if k is equal to 1, it's these two terms. If k is equal to 2, it's these two terms. If k is equal to 3, it's these two terms, and so on. So the thing we're taking the limit of is the ratio of consecutive terms. Now remember from a geometric series, if this were geometric, there would be a common ratio. So if this were geometric, then it wouldn't matter which pair I took, I would always get the same ratio. Furthermore, we saw with a geometric sequence that if that ratio is less than 1 in absolute value, my series converges, and if that ratio is greater than 1 in absolute value, the series diverges. Now if we don't have a geometric sequence, these won't all be the same. I might get different ratios at different pairs. So what I do is I take a limit. I take the limit as k goes to infinity of these ratios, and the ratio test says this r behaves similarly to the r from a geometric series. If this ratio is less than 1, my series acts like a geometric series with a ratio less than 1 and it converges. If this limit is greater than 1, my series acts like a geometric series with ratio greater than 1 and it diverges. If it's equal to 1, we need to try something else. So let's see how this test works. Here's a series, and I want to know whether it converges or diverges. Now it's a good idea to get in the habit of doing the divergence test in your head first. The things being added up look like k over 3 to the k. The numerator is a polynomial function. It's actually a linear polynomial function. The denominator is an exponential function. Exponential functions grow way faster than polynomial functions, so that means the limit as k goes to infinity of a polynomial function over an exponential function is always going to be 0. So the divergence test doesn't tell us anything. We could use the integral test, but integrating this would be pretty messy. So instead, let's use the ratio test. The limit I'm going to take is my k plus first term over my kth term. So the kth term is easy enough, that's k over 3 to the k. Now I need to figure out what term I get if all of my k's are replaced by k plus 1's. So the k in the numerator becomes a k plus 1, the k in the denominator also becomes a k plus 1. What I want to know is the limit as k goes to infinity of the absolute value of this ratio. Now these are all positive terms, so I don't have to worry too much about that absolute value. Now a nice trick in simplifying this is to match up the terms that came from the same place. So this k here gave me this k and also this k plus 1. So I'm going to match up those terms. Then this 3 to the power k here, that gave me a 3 to the k here and a 3 to the k plus 1 here, so I'm going to match up those terms as well. The 3 to the k is in the denominator of the denominator, so when we flip it to multiply, it comes up here to the top. So this is the limit as k goes to infinity of 1 plus 1 over k times a third. 
As k goes to infinity, this 1 over k goes to 0, so my limit is a third. And this is what I'm calling r. Now in my test, r is a third. It's less than 1. That means the series converges. It converges by the ratio test because r is a third and a third is less than 1. Again, it's easy to get lost in all of this notation, so let's just remind ourselves with a visual analogy what's going on. The terms of my sequence being added are k over 3 to the k. So when k is 1, I have 1 over 3 to the 1. When k is 2, 2 over 3 squared, 3 over 3 cubed. These are the terms being added, and these are getting smaller and smaller. That's why the divergence test didn't work. But what I'm worried about is not the limit of these terms, which goes to 0. What I'm worried about is the limit of their sum. So one by one, I start adding those terms together, and I keep track of their combined sum. The first one is a third. I add the first two together, I get five ninths, two thirds, and this is growing because I keep adding these terms. And as I keep adding terms, which now are so small as to be microscopic, the sum keeps growing. And what we determined in the previous slide was that it's going to keep growing, but not too high. We don't know exactly what it's converging to, but we know the more terms we add, the closer and closer this gets to some number. Don't know what that number is, but we know that it doesn't grow off to infinity. It gets closer and closer to a number. Here's a similar example. I want you to use the ratio test and determine whether the series converges or diverges. If I wanted to rule out the divergence test in my head, again, I would notice that I have a polynomial function divided by an exponential function. Exponentials grow much faster than polynomials. So the limit of my sequence, the terms being added up, is indeed 0. That means maybe we converge, maybe we diverge. We need another test. Let's figure out r. I don't need the absolute values because I only have positive terms. In the numerator, every k turns into k plus 1. So this k becomes k plus 1. And this k becomes k plus 1 as well. So this is a sub k plus 1. For the denominator, my k's are just k's. So k to the fifth is k to the fifth, and 4 to the k is 4 to the k. Now we need to evaluate this limit. And again, a nice thing to keep track of is this k to the fifth gave rise to this k to the fifth and this k plus 1 to the fifth. So it's nice to group those together. Then this 4 to the power k gave us this 4 to the k and this 4 to the k plus 1. And again, it's nice to group those together. 4 to the k plus 1 is in the denominator. 4 to the k gets flipped up to the numerator. The reason it's nice to put these like terms together is that usually we can simplify. So k plus 1 to the fifth over k to the fifth, I can write as k plus 1 over k to the fifth. And 4 to the k over 4 to the k plus 1, I can divide the top and the bottom by 4 to the power k, and I just get a quarter. Now this limit here, of course, is just 1. So r is equal to 1 quarter, and a quarter is less than 1. So by the ratio test, my series converges. The terms of the sequence being added are going to 0. Now in the beginning, they get a little bigger, but then they get to decreasing. So I know the limit of the sequence is 0. That's why we needed something other than the divergence test. So again, I imagine adding these together. So I take the first one and the second one and the third one, and I add up each term one by one, and I keep track of what this sum is doing. And because we found that this is a convergent series, we know that this number is never going to get bigger than some finite bound. It's not going to keep growing to infinity. It's going to get closer and closer to one finite number. That's what it means for the series to converge.